Inside of Civil 3D 2019, we have a new design efficiency update, a fixed vertical curve by high or low point that we can add to our profiles. This type of geometry will allow us to actually start our design from a known point or a point in our design that we have to hold and then actually design outward from it. So a good example of this is we, we have this road that is tying in from our two existing roads here and that we actually pulled this information in from InfraWorks. But we've got a culvert that needs to be placed right here to pass the water from the west side of the site to the east. So in our profile, we have our culvert that is shown. So that culvert is a four foot high culvert and we've got to be four foot above it. So that point right there in space actually is going to control the design of this road, at least in this portion of the road. Now before when we had to create a situation like this, meaning we had to build a vertical curve here to create our low point, we would have to maybe iterate back and forth in order to find that exact location horizontally with a station and with a vertical elevation that we had a known elevation at that point. So we're able to do this now with this new fixed vertical curve because it is controlled by higher low point. So if we go over and select our vertical alignment from our, or our vertical geometry inside of our profile, if you see here under our vertical curves and more fixed vertical curves, we have our two new vertical curve types. A fixed vertical curve that is parabolic for high and low and then ask for a, a parameter and length. Same thing for circular curves. So we're going to select fixed vertical curve parabolic. All right, and the first thing it asks you for here is the higher low point. So I'm going to snap to this high point. All right, will this curve be in a sag or a crest? In this particular instance, it's going to be in a sag. And We'll give it a K value. We know the K value. It's a in this particular area. It's a 30. All right, and we'll start off with a curve length of 150 feet. So it places our curve in our sag condition, and you can see the three grip marks. Okay, so I just go ahead and hit enter, and it's going to start to try and populate my corridor more because I've got my corridor broken out here because I don't have vertical elevations that it can follow right at this point. We're going to connect all that together and it'll generate the corridor back for me. So if you look here in the profile view, you can select that curve that we just put in, one of our new features, our new curves, and I can actually grab it and pull it out. Now look what's happening when you pull this out. If I stretch it this direction and let go, it's holding that particular high-low point. Now I can grab that and pull it back again and it resets. But what we're wanting to do now is we're wanting to actually tie this back to our tangents on either side. So this is what I mean by design from a known point outwards. So we're going to design from this point, this direction, and this point, this direction. Now the way we connect those back is we use a tangent that is called a floating tangent through a point. Now I can tell you right now I don't think this will tie back the way it sits. So I can move my cursor and see if I have the X. I can see that I have that tangent has to come way down, okay? So, a couple things I could do. I could actually just grab this curve and I could pull it up until it gets closer to my tangent. It does make that curve longer, but design-wise it may be desirable to do that. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit more. We also don't want to create a ton of cut in this area. So, I'll grab my tangent and I'll pull it back down just a little bit. Now we'll try and add that tangent, the uh, floating tangent to a point. I'll select my curve and notice that I don't get any errors this time. So I, my tangent is actually low enough to actually create tangency. So I pick that point and I hit enter and notice that it fixes everything together. All right. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. And again, notice I'll put this in. I know that my tangent won't hook this way, but I can still select it and move it and you can see that I've got to get down below elevation 900 in order for it to connect. So I would just simply grab my tangent and drop it down and I would go back and add my floating tangent. So I pick my entity and notice I'm still not low enough. All right. 
So I would just grab and edit that back down. Or I guess I could have extended this out a little bit more, but you have to remember that when you move this particular piece of the curve, it's going to affect the entire geometry. So I could have moved that. All right, I'll go ahead and add that tangent back again. And you can see that now that my curve is above, I can hook those together and it creates a grade break there. Now, in those areas where I have grade breaks, and I'll pull this, this labeling down so that you can see it, I could go back and add our typical vertical curve, of maybe a free vertical curve parabola, and just add that back in. So we can see right here in our command line that it is asking for a K value, so I'll just say 30, and I'll hit enter, and it adds my vertical curve there. And I can do the same thing on the opposite side. I can add that same free vertical curve parabola and just add that in. And now I have my road co connected all together. Now, one thing to remember about these curves, remember this point is our low point. So it is what is controlling this curve. All right, so if I grab and move any of the geometry around it, like say I move this, this, uh, this vertical curve, I want to move this down. Notice it will move down, all right? But when I move up too far where it becomes non-tangent, then it will stop. But I can move and edit the geometry on the outside. Now I move that geometry. Notice that my low point did not change, all right? I can see right here I've got that station labeled, and I can see that my low point is still the same and the station is still the same, which is what we were trying to achieve. I'll grab this on the other side here and give you a quick look. I can move my geometry down, all right? But it's still, when it becomes non-tangent or the geometry doesn't work anymore how we've defined it, then it will not allow you to go any further. So this is a pretty tight curve. I can move it a little bit laterally, all right? And it'll work fine, or you can actually adjust it. But once it becomes unusable or, or non-tangent, then it will not allow you to do it. So this is just one example of creating a vertical curve by using the fixed vertical curves by high point or low point. Again, this is a pretty typical scenario and a typical everyday thing you might run into. So I hope that you would see how this would help in efficiency of creating this vertical profile.